Hello, I'm here at the dyno, and this is the first step of my little experiment here I'm going to do on the 6L80 slash 6L90 transmission. And what I'm going to try to do is figure out what you're actually changing when you change these tables and HP tuners. If you've ever tuned these Tecums and these 6L80, 6L90s, you'll probably know that there's a lot of these tables that aren't very intuitive. They don't seem to make sense. Yeah, that leaves you wondering what you're actually changing when you modify the numbers. If you're a transmission person like myself and you have a pretty good understanding of the hydraulics that's going on, when you see online some of these people that are tweaking and changing some of these values, you kind of wonder if they're actually changing what they think they're changing. So that's the purpose of what I'm going through to do here is kind of do modifications, change things a little at a time, one step at a time, and actually do run these things on a dyno. Not necessarily this transmission dyno, but on a chassis dyno to see how it all works. Now the reason why I have it here on the, on the transmission dyno is because I had to modify this lower valve body half. I had to drill a bunch of holes in it. I had to weld this section shut so that I can put a tap in there. So um, I had to go through and do some modifications to this lower valve body so that I can get pressure taps in there. I wanted to make sure it didn't screw up this valve body half to the point where it wouldn't work on a vehicle. So I figured I have a transmission, got plenty of these cores. Uh, the students go through these in my class. So I just put one up on the dyno, put my modified valve body half on there, see if it works. This connection right here, feeding into the Tecum, is just a pigtail that you can buy off the internet. It's pretty cheap, I think 75 bucks. And a company called EFI Connections makes those, you'll see them. They also make other connections for, for computers and so forth. I bought this E38 ECM off of eBay for like 75 bucks or something. Came with the pigtails on them. And I, you can buy, I just grabbed one off of a car that we were scrapping out, but you can buy these DLC pigtails. And I basically just got power ground and some communication lines. And what I've done is I've connected the Tecum communication lines, which are these tan wires, to the ECM's communication lines. And then I've connected those to the diagnostic link connector. I put a 60 ohm resistor across the communication lines because they're supposed to be terminated. So can high and can low need to be connected with 60 ohms. I didn't have 60 ohms, so this is two 100 ohm resistors wired in parallel, and then one 10 ohm resistor wired in series with that. And then you basically provide power and ground to your Tecum, your diagnostic link connector, and your ECM and you're good to go. You can communicate. At that point, that's basically a bench harness, and when you plug a scan tool into it or the HP tuners tool into it, you can go through and uh, communicate. You're going to have a bunch of codes. There's going to be a lot of data that's missing and so forth, but it still connects and communicates. You can still pull a tune, upload a tune, um, you know, and, and do those kinds of things, some of those different features. So what I've got going up here on these different computer screens here is I've got, I wish I had an eight channel Pico scope. I only have two, I have four channel Pico scopes, but I've got on this computer, I've got the one, two, three, four clutch, the three, five R clutch, the four, five, six clutch, and the two, six clutch. They're all tapped in there with pressure taps. And these pressure taps basically utilize these cheap Chinese transducers. I mean, we don't have an unlimited budget here and I'm just playing around, so. These only cost like 25 bucks. You can just search them up, 500 PSI pressure transducer, and that's what you get. It really works well with the scope because zero PSI here at sea level is, um, or you know, just atmospheric pressure at sea level is equal to about a half of a volt. And then 500 PSI is four and a half volts. And if you go negative 15 PSI, like if you're gonna use this for measuring vacuum, it goes down to about 375 millivolts. So anyway, if you just hook this up to a DVOM and try to interpret the values, the numbers aren't going to uh, directly equate to pressure. So you would, with the scope, like a Pico scope, I can put a custom range in here and I can let it do the corrections on the side. So it'll actually read in accurate pressure readings. So that's what we've got going on there. So like I said, this Pico scope right here, I've got reading on this computer, the clutches basically, everything but the low reverse clutch. And then this picoscope over here on this computer is measuring just line pressure and torque over to clutch pressure. Now some of the things that you're gonna notice when we're running this thing on the dyno is that there's gonna be a lot of noise on this screen. And 
these big electric motors and so forth, they put out a lot of uh, electromagnetic interference. But this thing has, these Picos have the ability of filtering. So after they record their data, I can filter it out. It cleans out all that noise, that high frequency noise, and you can actually see the pressure. Okay, in case you were unaware, in the HP Tuner scanner, if you click on this green button here where it says Vehicle Controls and Special Functions, that opens up this box that allows you to do a bunch of different things from controlling uh, idle speed to turning your fuel injectors on and off. And, but we're gonna look at the transmission. With that, you can go through and turn different drivers or the solenoids on and off. You can reset adapts. You can command different gears. You can turn the torque footer clutch on and off. But first to start out with, we're looking at these different gear commands. And when I shift from first to second, you can hear the transmission actually shift and you can actually hear it struggle. There's something wrong with this transmission. I'm gonna shift it in the third. And it eases up, sounds a little easier on the, on the ears. Input shaft spins a little faster. I'm gonna shift it in the fourth. Sounds like it's struggling again. Fifth. And then lastly, sixth. Then I can go on and turn the torque over clutch solenoid on. And apply lockup too. Downshift me back down in the first. So after we cleaned off all this noise, you can see the pressures are pretty good on this transmission. Matter of fact, the issues with this thing binding in uh, second, fourth, and sixth gear, we can tell by looking at this is not a hydraulic problem because when we're in second, fourth, and sixth, all we have are the two clutches that are supposed to be applied. Those are the only ones that have hydraulic pressure. So we know it's not a hydraulic issue. We know it's not coming from a solenoid or a valve. That extra load that's occurring on the motor on the electric motor on the dyno, that's likely occurring because there's a mechanical problem there. Likely the students didn't get that 3-5R drum all the way down and they missed the clutch and when they bolted it together they crushed it and that's dragging that on. So that's what I'm assuming. Won't be able to find that out until I take that transmission apart, but really what I was trying to prove out here is that the valve body modification that I did, drilling and tapping into that plate, that all that stuff worked out well and wasn't hanging a valve or having any crazy cross leaks or just leakage period. You can see here on this uh, pressure graph, um, in green, I've got the one, two, three, four clutch. And as soon as I shifted in the second, the two, six clutch pressure climbed up. And when I shifted into third, my two, six dropped off and my three, five R climbed up. And when I shifted uh, into fifth gear, fourth gear, the three, five R clutch turned off and the four, five, six clutch turned on. And then you could see when I shifted into fifth gear, the one, two, three, four clutch drops off and my three, five R comes back on. And when I shift in the six, my three, five R drops off and my two, six comes on. So at any one of these, I can kind of look at how the pressures are interacting. So you know, like in this one here, if I pushed off the, anything that's not related to the shift, this is the offcoming clutch and this is the oncoming clutch and these pressures right here are where they're kind of controlling the um, quality of the shift how quick that clutch applies to bridge the gap of the speed between the input and the output shaft so that about does it on this transmission dyno now i'm going to take this valve body i'm going to put it on a vehicle we got a 2014 chevy silverado that's bone stock it's in great shape very low miles on it and it's in perfect condition so be a perfect candidate for this because when I go to do any modifications, I know I'm dealing with a good engine and I know I'm dealing with a good transmission. And like I said, everything's bone stock on it. I don't plan on modifying the engine on it. This is just all different uh, transmission tunes and modifications that we're gonna toy with on that. And this process is probably gonna take a couple months to complete. I don't wanna rush through this thing. I don't wanna finish some tests, button it all back up, and then kind of wish I did some more tests and have to kind of redo a bunch of things. So I'm the only one that uses this vehicle. It's a school vehicle. There's no demand for it. So I, my plan is, is to kind of take my time and go through this thing. So you might not see updates on this information very frequently, and maybe once every couple of weeks or something like that. 
But I promise you, as, as I gather content, I will provide it to you guys. And at some point, maybe we can do a live stream, maybe towards the end, once I've gotten a lot of information, I feel pretty confident in what I'm looking at. And uh, we can go through and do a live stream and you guys can request different things. We could do some modifications and I can upload them and run them right there on the dyno live. So anyway, if you have any questions or comments or any requests, you can feel free to comment, post them up below, and I'll try to keep you in tune with what's going on. See what I did there?